From honing her entrepreneurial skills on the busy streets of Soweto, to supporting her family's business at the tender age of 11, to heading up an international acclaimed travel agency, Travel with Flair has been an, one of the most fastest growing travel agencies in the world. She's a joint founder, managing director. Joanna Mukoki is changing the tide in the world of business. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome her to Kicking Doors. I'm gonna take you many years ago to go so way to the type of upbringing you've had, because a lot of people see the success now and they see what you're doing, but they actually don't know where you come from. Yeah, so we grew up go so way to uh, Orlando West, and uh, I have uh, three other siblings, of course, family of six. And, uh, you know, I mean, like a normal black family in those years where we didn't have much. I mean, people cannot believe that I actually walked to school without shoes and yeah. we used to walk one and a half hours crossing railway lines to school okay, and walk back. I uh, and then I went to Bepakito. Um, and then obviously because of getting straight A's at school, then I was one of the few students that they took uh, from the public schools to start the school to start a school called uh, Pace Commercial College. And obviously I went to Rhodes to do uh, become a accounts degree. And, um, and I think as well as a business person, you know, it was a good starting point for me because ultimately any business, the success of it and the longevity of it always comes back to the numbers. Definitely the numbers. Now let's get into the, uh, the pageants. I mean, you, you, yourself and your sister got into pageants and you guys became one of the most recognizable faces in the pageant space. But today you guys are one of the few most successful females in, in, in Africa. Why business? When did the entrepreneurial bug bite you? Well, I think for me, when I was doing my articles at KPMG after I finished my uh, BCom degree at Rhodes, um, because obviously I was already in the public eye with having won beauty pageants and being a continuity presenter on Mnet, you know, I had a lot of headhunters that called me. You know, you find a person who can do all of that and still be an A student. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I had a lot of people knock on my doors and I thought, you know, every second week the package would double yeah. with headhunters wanting me to be able to work for the companies they were hunting for. And I thought, huh, if I have so much value, I better go out and do it for myself. And I think looking back uh, 19 years on, it was the best decision I ever made. Never so, been employed a day in my life. Are you, so the first business you got into was traveling? <laughs> it wasn't travel. I started with a communications and events business. Okay. And then um, with every, you know, for me, I love to travel. I love to see the world. And I really wanted to see a world. I mean, can you imagine a young girl from the dusty streets of Soweto, never having been outside, uh, you know, uh, the township, yeah. um, except uh, when you go to town. And, uh, and I knew that there was a bigger world because our dad uh, used to give us a lot of very good books to read. Mm. And I knew that there was a, another world out there. And then I met uh, my business partners while I was still running my communications and events business that wanted to see the world as well. And uh, we thought, ah, why don't we start something a business in, in, in that line. The one thing I must say before I tell you how difficult it was that I still have my original partners. So I'm one of those few who uh, is able to uh, work hard and be able to keep the partners. Because I think ultimately the reason why other businesses do not succeed and partnerships fall apart is the one part is feeling like they're putting too much effort than the other. the other. Then you feel like you're carrying everybody else. So really amazing hardworking boys that I have. and. Um, Obviously, our industry, there's a lot of guarantees that need to come into play. There's very high barriers to entry, so we're lucky that we started it in the, in the, in the early 90s. And, uh, and I think that we did it right from inception. We were all genuinely putting in what we wanted to... Uh, Swap equity. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's easy as well to be able to negotiate shares if you're starting from a zero base. Yes. You know, before the money comes onto the table, you decide how do you're going to um, cut the pie. And, uh, and I think that I love the respect that we have in the industry and I love the respect that we have between each other. Obviously, Bassi did buy some of my shares then um, in about 2001. Okay. Um, when she obviously realized that her sister is uh, changing is a game changer as she calls Oh, me. so let me, let me get this correctly. So when you started the business, it was only ba Basi was not involved. She wasn't there. So, oh, so she bought shares in at a later stage. At a later stage, oh. correct. And, uh, and she's always said that, uh, you know, my business, of all the other businesses that she's had, is the one that has shown her very good returns. So uh, she's very proud of me. And I'm very proud of what we've achieved. I mean, we started our office with only three people. 
with one office in Pretoria and now we have a national footprint. I think our staff complement just pierced the 800 mark. Wow. And uh, we're the single largest independently owned agency in the whole in the world. continent. Absolutely. Well, and what, what were some of the challenges over the years? Obviously access to finance, like yeah. everything else. You see young kids wanting to be able to do something that they looks like a dream and people do not understand it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was difficult for people to be able to believe in our offering. And we found a niche. I think our company is known for, um, you know, our tech savviness. Um, and we have amazing online tools as well that we roll out to all of our corporate uh, clients. And more importantly, I think it's our service excellence. You know, you're only as good as the last uh, booking you have done. And you obviously understand that we operate predominantly in the corporate space. What advice would you give to younger entrepreneurs out there as far as concentrating on a certain passion or skill set that they have? I think the one thing that people need to be able to realize, at least myself personally, I'm allergic to mediocrity. Mm. I always say you have to, every single day, strive to be the better version of yourself. Being in business, as you know, is not easy. So the one thing that will set you apart is your passion and your constant action in persevering and going back and re working the model until you find the success. And I find that a lot of young people who go into business want to find something that they think will make them the money. Mm. And you know that in business, it's not about the money. You need to be able to love what you do and do it better than anybody else and have those high service standards. And then the profitability will take care of itself. That should never be the focus that you want to be able to make the money because it's going to be difficult to get to the suitcase. Mm. But if you find something that you're really genuinely passionate about, you work hard at it and you consistently rework your model and do it better than anybody else, in their lives the success and success will definitely come.